few weeks ago, Instagram published an article on its website outlining exactly how its algorithms work. There are five main ones, feed, reels, stories, explore, and search. In an effort to provide greater transparency and clarity about how those algorithms actually work, Instagram pretty much laid it all out for us. And I'm gonna lay it all out for you in this video. I'm Kevin Patrick Robbins, a commercial photographer based in Canada, and this is Studio Builder, where I help fellow photographers develop and build their professional photography business. I'm telling you that so that you have some context for just how important Instagram is to my business. It's critical. As professional photographers, we need to have active Instagram accounts. We just do. It's the most powerful organic marketing tool that we have at our disposal. But Instagram can also be incredibly frustrating because they keep changing the rules of the game. Last year, CEO Adam Mosseri told us that they were shifting to video in an obvious effort to compete with TikTok. And then a few months ago, they finally listened to the backlash and, and they changed their mind again and said they would be providing a more balanced approach with their channels. What does that even mean? The good news is we now have some answers. Okay, let's start with the bird's eye view of how Instagram ranks content. Instagram has five main parts, feed, reels, stories, explore, and search. And each part of the Instagram app has its own algorithm. Those algorithms are tailored to how each of us uses the app and more accurately, how each of us uses each part of that app. In its article, Instagram did not address how the search algorithm works, so I'm not gonna be talking about that here. I assume it works like most search algorithms work, ranking based on search term, proximity, language, and other relevant signals. In this article, Moseri writes, Instagram doesn't have a singular algorithm that oversees what people do and don't see on the app. We use a variety of algorithms, classifiers, and processes, each with its own purpose. He further explains that people tend to look for their closest friends in stories, use Explore to discover new content and creators, and watch Reels to be entertained. Because of that, Instagram ranks things differently in each part of the app. That means if you watch reels that are primarily stand-up comedians, sports highlights, and gardening videos, but you seek out the work of fellow photographers in the Explore page, those are gonna be their own unique experiences within the app with fairly little crossover. Where crossover is likely to occur is based on the accounts that you are following. So if you follow Matt Reif's reels, then pictures of his abs are likely to show up in your feed, and videos from Stephen Klein are likely to show up in your reels if you're following him for his photography. Instagram says feed is your personal home base to catch up with friends, family, and interests. Feed contains a mix of three things. Accounts you follow, content from accounts Instagram thinks you'll enjoy, and of course, a billion ads. Feed contains a blend of formats, and those are the videos, the photos, and photo carousels. Moseri explains they've recently started taking format into consideration, saying, if we notice you prefer photos, we'll show you more photos. What shows up in your feed is determined by a number of factors that Instagram calls signals. And there are apparently thousands of them, such as who you follow, what you follow, such as hashtags and locations, what you've liked, whether you're using Instagram on your phone or the web, et cetera, et cetera. The article outlines the most important signals for ranking content in feed, which it says are roughly in order of importance. They are as follows. First, your activity. Posts you've liked and commented on, shared and bookmarked. They use those signals to help them understand what you might be interested in. Secondly, information about the post. How popular is the post? How many people are liking it? How fast are people engaging with it? So are they liking it, commenting, sharing, saving? And, and then also metadata, which they bill as mundane information about the content itself, such as the location, if it was tagged and when it was posted. Those are the two bits they mentioned in the article, but I'm pretty sure the attempt to downplay the metadata as mundane information means there are a lot more metadata they take into consideration, such as tagged accounts and hashtags. Third, information about the account that posted it. Instagram says this gives them information about whether or not that account might be interesting to you. They'll also take into consideration how popular that account has been recently. This is why when a reel you've engaged with goes viral, you're going to see more reels from that account showing up in your feed. Similarly, if you make a post that goes viral and gets a lot of attention, a lot more of your posts are gonna show up in other people's feeds. And four, your history of interacting with an account. Instagram says this gives them a sense of how interested you might be in seeing more content from a particular account in general. They also give the example of 
whether or not you comment on each other's posts. That last bit is important for photographers. If you wanna get the attention of art producers, art buyers, art directors, creative directors, photo reps, etc., then you need to spend time interacting with the posts that those people post, liking, commenting, and replying. Once all of those signals are taken into consideration, Instagram makes predictions about what you might wanna see and then serves them up to you in an infinite scroll. It says it makes roughly a dozen calculations in determining what to show you, but they only outline the five they look at the closest. How likely you are to spend time on a post, comment on it, like it, share it, and tap the profile photo. Mosseri explains that the more likely you are to take an action and the more heavily Instagram weighs that action, which we don't know, the higher up in feed you'll see the post. So the more likely you are to like a post, the higher up it will rank. Speaking of which, if you're liking this video, please click that like button and signal to YouTube that this video would be something other people would like to see as well. That helps me out, which allows me to create more informative content like this for you. Other considerations Instagram takes into account are that they try not to show you too many posts from the same account, too many suggested posts in a row, or posts that might violate their community guidelines. Now, when it comes to how reels are ranked on Instagram, I think it's important to first look at the criteria they use to reduce the visibility of certain reels so you know what to avoid posting. Obviously, anything that violates the community guidelines is a primary factor, but Instagram also noted that low resolution reels and reels that have watermarks, such as reels that you've downloaded from TikTok, will also rank lower. Reels that are muted or a majority of text will be ranked lower, as are reels that focus on political issues or have already been, been posted, posted to Instagram. Instagram. Additional factors include reels that have borders, which I'm assuming means that are not in a vertical 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio. Also, videos that are not in your own original voice, which I think is probably to detect if the video was created in TikTok and uses a TikTok text to speech voice. So now that you know what will get your reels lowered in ranking, here's what Instagram says are the signals it uses to rank reels. First off, the majority of what you see in reels is from accounts you do not follow. Instagram says it sources reels that thinks you will like and then orders them based on its prediction of your level of interest in those reels. How interested are you going to be in seeing them? Instagram wrote that in order to find entertaining reels, it makes a set of predictions, the most important of which it says are how likely you are to reshare a reel, watch a reel all the way through, like it, and this one I think is interesting, how likely you are to go to the audio page. It views that last one as a proxy for whether or not you might be interested in making your own reel using that audio sound. So whether or not a specific reel might inspire you to make your own reel is a major factor in whether or not you will be shown a reel and how high it will be ranked on the reels page. Basically, whether or not you are likely to make a trending sound trend further. The signals that Instagram lists as most important for how they rank reels are the same as those for how they rank your feed page, except in a slightly different order. For feed, those signals are your activity, information about the post, information about the account that posted it, and your history of interacting with the account that posted it, with the weighting leaning towards accounts you follow and interact with. For reels, however, the order becomes your activity, your history of interacting with the account that posted it, with the weighting leaning towards accounts that you are not following, information about the reel, and information about the account that posted it, such as the account's popularity and level of engagement. Now I want to take a closer look at a few things here. First, when it comes to information about the reel, Instagram says that it includes the audio track and the visuals in the video. It doesn't say the sound or the music used in the video, it says the audio track. That means what is being said or heard. Just like on YouTube, what you are actually saying in a video is being transcribed on Instagram's back end and used as signals in ranking reels. What's more interesting is that Instagram also noted the visuals in the video act as a signal in ranking reels. We already know that visuals containing watermarks, nudity, sexual activity, violence, etc., will cause reels to rank lower, but it likely also means that Instagram is doing a visual analysis of the people, places, actions, objects, etc in the video. So if you like surfing videos, you are likely to see more videos that contain beaches, surfboards, and people surfing. Instagram also notes that it uses the level of engagement an account has to help you find compelling content from a wide variety of people and give everyone a chance to find their audience. So if you're making reels, it helps to have content that gets people to engage with it. 
Instagram designed Explore to help us discover new things. The grid contains photos and videos specifically from accounts that you don't yet follow. To do this, Instagram looks at your past activity of other posts that you've liked, saved, shared, and commented on to get a sense of what you might be interested in. Specifically, what they've said is that the best way to guess how interested you are in something is to predict how likely you are to do something with that post. So activity is paramount. In rough order of importance, the signals it uses to rank posts on the Explore page are as follows. Information about the post, your activity on the Explore page, your history of interacting with the account that posted it, and information about the account that posted it. There are a few key differences between Explorer and Feed and Reels to point out. Explore prioritizes information about the post, the photo or the video, and its popularity above all else. How quickly are people liking, commenting, sharing, and saving a post matter more in Explore than they do in Feed and Reels. Also, you are much more likely to see posts from accounts you have not interacted with than you are in Feed, which is the whole point of Explore, really. But if you've interacted with that account in the past, it will increase that post's ranking even if you are not following that account. And if you're not following this account yet, please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications so you don't miss any more videos like this. So if you've interacted with an account recently, say liking a number of posts on the Explore page, that will decrease the rank in Explore since Explore's purpose is to expose you to new people. However, since your history of interacting with an account is a greater ranking signal in feed, you're likely to start seeing more posts from that account over in your feed, essentially causing posts from an account to gradually move from your Explore page into your feed. As for stories, Instagram views stories as a way to share everyday moments. You'll only see stories from accounts you follow, and of course, more ads. Similar to feed, the ranking of stories starts by looking at all the stories shared by all the accounts that you follow, is then ranking them based on viewing history, engagement history, and closeness. This seems pretty self-explanatory and obvious. It, it makes sense that how often you view and engage with a particular account's stories would elevate their stories in the ranking. And if you're mutually following and engaging with each other, there's gonna be a relationship there that you wanna maintain. So Instagram will prioritize those stories for you. In the post, Instagram also addressed the idea of shadow banning. Here is what they said in their own words. Contrary to what you might have heard, it's in our interest as a business to ensure that creators are able to reach their audiences and get discovered so they can continue to grow and thrive on Instagram. If there is an audience that is interested in what you share, then the more effectively we help that audience see your content, the more they will use our platform. While we've heard some people believe you need to pay for ads to achieve better reach, we do not suppress content to encourage people to buy ads. It's a better business to make Instagram more engaging overall by growing reach for those who create the most engaging content and then sell ads to others. I'll link to the full article in the description below so you can read it yourself if you wish. In the meantime, I highly recommend checking out this video right here about why we as professional photographers need to be using Instagram. That's it for this one. Take care.